Hello and welcome back to the Sega News Bits Extras. I'm your host, George, and with me is Barry. Hello. Today, we're just going to kick it right off because we have a lot of things to talk about. And if you guys notice, this episode is actually free on YouTube. We're going to be start doing this where the episode goes live on YouTube for everybody, just the first one of the month. And if you guys want to support this kind of show, you guys could donate $5 and then you guys get every episode every week of us just rambling on about news that didn't make it to uh, the Sega News Bits. But th- that sounds kind of like, you know... Bad offerings, kind of like side dish. Is that good? I mean, should they be giving us five dollars? <laughs> yeah, why not? No, it's a Sega Bit side dish. I like that name. You should have just called it that, right? <laughs> well, hindsight's um, twenty twenty. So, uh, the first bit of news is that uh, Virtual Fighter this weekend at Evo had a tournament, a side tournament. Uh, they had sixty entries. Uh, uh, some old school Virtual Fighter fans, I mean, uh, the players showed up in this event. And it was kind of big. Uh, our own Patrick was the contact here, and uh, Made Man and uh, the guys from VirtualFighter.com put it together. And they've been doing a lot of tournaments this year, and it's nice to see the scene still going. It's tiny, and if you guys want to join and you guys want to see these, like at least the top eight or the matches that happen at Evo, you guys could check it out. We left the, the Twitch link in the description below. It's Avoid. Workforce is the guy's name, and uh, hopefully he avoids it for m- as much as he can. And uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff, I think you guys should support. Virtual Fighter is one of those games that uh, is a staple of Sega and deserves to have a fan scene at least for tournaments. And I'm glad it's happening because they had one at CEO too, and uh, it's pretty nice. The the big piece of news mm-hmm. for this episode is that Ian Curran is the new chief officer and president of Sega of America. And you dug it into him, Barry. Can you tell us more about him? <laughs> I, I looked at his LinkedIn and I, I read a bit about him. You stalked him. Um, You're stalking yeah, well, him. yeah, I've been, I'm not gonna dox him though, it's okay. Uh, so basically, you know, the way it's structured is we have um, uh, Sega of America with, you know, Ian there. And that's also Atlas USA. He's going to be serving on the board of Atlas USA, and I believe Atlas USA has their own leadership. But it's it's still a little confusing to me. However, he will be reporting directly to the CEO of Sega West, which oversees the Americas and Europe, and that is uh, Tats- Tatsuyuki Miyazaki. Miyazaki, and so. Ian's history, he's uh, he's worked for companies like THQ, Acclaim, and Geotech, and I've heard some people going, oh, well, THQ and Acclaim, that's not some very good, because look what happened to them. I mean, Ian's not responsible or directly responsible for whatever happened to those companies. Clearly, Sega has a good enough vetting process that they're going to interview the guy, know what became of such companies he's worked at, and what he did at those companies to... Um, raise money and sell games so it's I mean obviously I'm not Sega so I don't know what happened behind the scenes but I would be shocked if they were like yeah he, he killed THU in a claim let's bring him on see what happens <laughs> you know yeah I think people when they see those two names they kind of think of toxic or the last years of you know of their life but people don't mm-hmm. forget, people forget that THQ had like big teams that actually when they went out even Sega bought mm-hmm. some of their teams so it's yeah. I mean, it was just mismanagement there. I don't know if he was part of it. Like you said, he wasn't. So I would like to see what he does first. I think Sega's mm-hmm. going down a nice path. Hopefully he just keeps the gears turning there. Yeah. Um, another interesting thing is that it seems like the Sonic the Hedgehog brand especially is going to be important under him, which leads credence to the, you know, rumors or, you know, what we've been seeing is that Sonic and Sonic Team have been shifting to America. And so it's it's kind of like the Sonic Adventure 2 days, I guess, right? Because that's where the home base was for Sonic yeah. for a while. And even Sonic 2, you know? I mean, oh, wait, did right. you say 2 or did you say Adventure 2? Adventure 2 and 2. Yeah, it was like they do this every 10 years, right? They just bring it yeah. back to America and then they're like, oh, wait, this didn't work out. Let's go back. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. And, you know, what, what Ian's role is is to be profitable and make money for the company. And so... You know, that's what they hired him based on. So I, I don't have anything negative to say about the guy. And really, it's just, it's wait and see, <laughs> really. I, so Yeah, I agree. And yeah. the next bit of news, this is a three-part news. And this actually could have been its own news story. But 
I think it works just fine for here because it's not that much. It's a lot of speculation. Sega Financials, uh, part of the thing, or the little financial thing, was this, like, extra PDF they showed out. And, it, like, in part of it, it said that they were going to double down on resurrecting, bringing back franchises, Sega's classic IPs that people love. Uh, one of them that they said they resurrected in this uh, press release was uh, Shimu 1 and 2, which, if you read my uh, write-up on it, I disagreed because I feel like they just kind of jumped on the coattails of it coming on Kickstarter. Right. That's when they started developing on it. I wouldn't consider Sega resurrecting this. I would consider the fans resurrected it, and I think it's kind of a short-sighted of Sega's financial team to not even see the passion that fans put out on this Kickstarter that happened. So I, I don't consider that a resurrection. I consider House of the Dead a resurrection, and they did not list it on this uh, financial report. I don't know why. It's probably their... Mm -hmm best looking game that they've had in arcades for like years so what do you think about them doubling down on uh classic ips re or resurrecting classic ips i mean i think it's a great idea but like you said you know don't don't consider hd remasters reviving an ip like make new games i i'd maybe say that the 3d classics were quasi new games because they had new features and they played differently but like you said, the new House of the Dead, that's an actual new game. The uh, upcoming um, Sakura Wars is going to be an actual new game in a series. So I'd like to see more of that. And I'd like to see more HD remasters. But I hope they don't consider, you know, like, if Jet Set Radio Future got a PC release, they're like, well, we brought Jet Set Radio back. Those are the yeah. right <laughs> And uh, the other one was that uh, Yakuza 6 sort of leaked on PC, sort of didn't. Like... I'm not really on this. A lot of uh, other news stations, and I even posted it this way because it does say PC in the financial reports, but if you look at it, it says April 2018 as the release mm. date, which is the time, the day that uh, the PS4 version of Yakuza 6 came out in America. Look, I'm not saying that Yakuza 6 is not coming out of PC. It's obviously going to come out on PC because Yakuza 0 is such a big hit, but... Yeah. The financial report seems to be kind of, uh, they put PC on accident, kind of seems like at this point. But, yeah, it seems to be a typo. Yeah, so, but people are excited about it, but uh, I mean, that's part of the news. And mm -hmm. the other one was that they have three unannounced digital titles, and digital titles can mean a range of things. It can mean cell phone games, which, yes, I know, like Ideola. It can mean free to play PC game, like uh, that Total War game they have, Kingdoms. Uh, mm -hmm. It could also mean a free-to-play console game like Border Break. What do you think this, these are going to be? And what do you hope it's going to be as a digital title? Because like, this also means like um, downloadable, like Jet Set Radio HD. It, just does, it means not box. I feel like they're moving towards box, though. Like Shenmue 1 and 2 could have been digital easily. Sh Sonic Mania Plus seems like a fix to something that they shouldn't have done to begin with. They should have just done physical. And so I, I would be surprised if it's a remaster of a game that's not packaged, because they've seen growth in packaged games. Um, I'm going to guess maybe Border Break, because that is a digital title in Japan, and it would be great to see it over here. Um, maybe Outside of that, probably mobile, mobile games. Yeah, no, it's probably going to be mobile games, because they already listed Border Break on here as an announced title, so it can be Border Break. Right. So yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be mobile titles um i'm hoping that it's one more free to play title i can't think of anything that they could release that would be free to play right now maybe like soul mm -hmm. reverse i guess if they really wanted to but mm -hmm. some people are like yeah oh uh, virtual fighter 6 uh trust me you guys don't want virtual fighter 6 to be a free to play game i don't think so right so uh, right let's uh so that i mean that's all the news we have uh in this episode anything you want to add about these three pieces of news we just did. I mean, I think it's exciting. It shows that we're moving forward, and I really like doing stories like this because we can look back a year from now and see either how right we were, how wrong we were. You know, it might be like, oh my god, Ian was the guy that killed Saga. <laughs> or it might be, you know, or it might lead to nothing and we forget all about Ian and just move forward. So it's um, some really interesting things. Uh, it's big news in the long term, I think. A lot of this stuff, it's interesting to keep in the back of your head once you see what Sega's doing in 2019, 2020, things like that. I mean, especially the road to 2020. I'm hoping 
to see that really pay off and mean something rather than just a buzzword and then we go on to the road to 2025 or something. Yeah, so what do you guys think about this news? Do you think this is the right move for Sega? What do you think about the new product, president, or whatever he is, uh, Ian Curran? And what do you think about the brand new financial report from Sega? Let us know in the comments below. We always love hearing from you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.